Assalamualaikum and a very good day I wish Dr. Khairil. The entire commission will be discussing and presenting on the topic of constitutional rules and powers of the conference of rulers. Before we dive into the main point of the discussion, let us go through a bit a brief introduction on what is conflicts of rulers. Article 38, Clause 1 of the Federal Constitution mentioned that there shall be a Madras Raja Raja conference of rulers which shall be constituted in accordance with the fifth schedule. So the term of Madras Raja Raja in this article consists of the nine rulers of the Malay state of Negeri Sembilan, Selangor, Perlis, Terengganu, Kedah, Kelantan, Pahang, Johor and Perak, as well as the governors of the other four states of Penang, Melaka, Sabah and Sarawak. So in this video, we will discuss in detail on the constitutional role and powers of the Conference of Rulers and a bit of analysis, why do we think that the Conference of Rulers is still relevant and significant to the nation. But before that, it is essential to know the historical background pursuant to establishment of the role and power of the Conference of Rulers in the Constitution. British occupation in the 19th century significantly undermined the power of the Malay rulers in the Tanah Melayu, especially after the Franco Treaty, which was signed in 1874 with Perak's ruler and allowed for the appointment of a British resident in the state. And ever since that, further similar agreement was signed and the ruler's power has considerably decreased. So, to safeguard their constitutional reputation and powers, prior to independence, when the Red Commission respected the powers of the Conference of Rulers, the rulers strongly contested this very restricted provision made within the Red Commission, which is in regard to their constitutional powers, the position and characteristic of the Conference of Rulers, and the restrained financial powers according to the nation government. So, after a strong fight, as a result, changes to the draft constitution were made to clarify the role and function of the Conference of Rulers and giving them more authority over the administration of the state at important national issues. And among the modification in that on part 4 of the draft constitution, which is it gives the Conference of Rulers official standing and authority to appoint judges to the Supreme Court and members of the important court. Moving on to the constitutional rules of the Conference of Rulers, the Conference of Rulers is not just a mere symbol that Malaysia still has a monarchy, but the assembly of the rulers of every state has constitutional rules to be exercised in accordance with the federal constitution. In brief, the role of the conference is to firstly to monitor the position of the young Libertan Agong, secondly to advise the government of the day, thirdly is to define the religion of Islam, and lastly is to protect the Malay privilege and the rights of the native of Sabah and Sarawak. Assalamualaikum, my name is Amira and I will continue the discussion. Just now, Atika has talked about historical background and rules of the conference. Now, the question is what are the authority or legal provision saying that the conference can exercise such and such role. So, the authority can be found in Chapter 2, Part 4 of the Federal Constitution. To be specific, Article 38, Clause 2. Basically, this article lists out the functions of the conference of rulers, which will be discussed one by one. Firstly, Article 38, Clause 2, Subsection A provides the power to elect Yang Deputy Agong and Timbalan Yang Deputy Agong in accordance with the provisions of the schedule. So, it is about appointment of the king and how the king is elected is through voting done by the members of the conference. The procedure and criteria can be seen in the Part 1 of the third schedule. Uh, that's for YDPA. Meanwhile, Part 2 for the Timbalan YDPA. 
people to go also can be removed by the conference if he deemed unfit. And this can be exercised although it never been happened so far by virtue of Article 38 Clause C. It provides that the member of conference may act in their discretion in any proceedings relating to the election and removal of the Ketua Agong. This power is exclusively vested to the conference of ruler. So meaning that any advisor like prime minister or ministers are excluded from this function. Only member of conference is entitled to dismiss Yang Ketua Agong. Moving on to the Article 38 Clause 2B, the conference can agree or disagree to the extension of any religious acts, observances or ceremony to the Federation as a whole. As we know, the members of the conference consist of rulers who are head of religion of Islam in their states. Therefore, this conference can sit together and discuss about religious matters, like uh, determine when we're gonna fast, when Muslims are Muslim gonna celebrate Raya, and so on. So that's their job to discuss about religion. Article 48, Clause 2 C, it concerns on consenting or withholding consent to any law and making or giving advice on any appointment which under this constitution requires the consent of the conference or is to be made by or after consultation with the conference. So this provision is quite long, but the important ingredients that can be highlighted uh, is two. First one, the requirement of consent by the conference in certain laws. Uh, second one, the consultation made before appointment of head of the federal departments. So about legislative power being possessed by the conference, um, in regards to parliament where they pass a bill that touch upon sensitive matter, the bill must obtain two third majority. And the second question is that the bill must obtain consent from the conference because it is concerned on sensitive matters such as Malay privileges, national language, freedom of speech in the parliament, and others, which is, uh, which can be found in Article One Five Nine Clause Five. So to reiterate, in order to pass the bill on affirmation mat matters, they must obtain consent for the conference, and the conference can opt to reject the amendment, even though the even though all the members of parliament has agreed to that amendment. Like that, under this subsection, it stipulated that the conference of ruler has the right to be consulted first when the government made the appointments of high-profile posts. Examples of high-profile posts are like superior court judges, chairperson and members of the public services commission, etc. During the course of consultation, the conference can give advice that is suitable and necessary while examining the proposed appointees. Although the Prime Minister did not act on advice of the conference, the consultation is uh, must be conducted and is mandatory so as to provide avenues for the rulers to advise the head of the government. Next subsection D is rather straightforward. It's about appointing the members of the special court. So basically, special court uh, is established to brought legal actions against and the Agung or rulers. And this special court consists of Chief Justice of the Federal Court, Chief Judges of the High Courts, and two other persons must be appointed by the conference. And this person must have held office as judge of the Federal Court or High Court. Article 38 Clause 2E allow the conference of rulers to grant pardons, reprieve and respite, or of remitting, suspending or committing sentences under Article 42 Clause 12. Generally, Yang Deputy Agong or Sultans have the power to grant royal pardon in their own territories. But what if the king himself is convicted? So this is where Article 42 Clause 12 is all about. If the offender is uh, the king or his wife, his son or daughter, uh, so the power to grant uh, pardon is now vested to the conference of rulers. Lastly, Article 38 Clause 2, the conference may deliberate on questions of national policy and any other matter that it thinks fits. During the meeting of the Conference of Rulers, uh, they must be accompanied with their advisors, which are the Prime Minister, Menteri Besar, and Chief Ministers, as required by Article 38 Clause 3. And this function, compared to other functions, is non-discretionary because although the Conference can advise, caution, and warn them, but their views are not binding. It has no legal effect on them. For example, in November 2002, the Conference of Rulers suggesting the Prime Minister cheats in appointing five of the nine members of the Judicial Appointments Committee so that conflict of interest can be avoided. Although this proposal is a very good idea, 
it has not been um, reflected until today because in the end it depends on the the prime minister himself whether to uh, do it or not so now uh, we move to the uh, next part of the assignment which is the analysis so the conference of rules uh, we know that the conference of rules are based on the Malay rulers uh, of every state so um, they of course they play an important role of uh, in the federal constitution so uh, the conference of rules has granted a number of significant uh, constitutional rights under the federation including the ability to vote on certain constitutional amendments the right to conduct on important government appointments and the right to discuss national policies including those pertaining to islam and malay privilege so as for the people itself, the conference of rules are their sole time in each state uh, that needs to obey. Um, so therefore, in this area, in this era, for nowadays, the, the conference of rulers is still relevant and significant for the government to obey to them. So in every question, of course, uh, we got um, some dispute views that uh, some say uh, yes, some say no. Uh, that the conference of rulers are still relevant in this modern era. So, uh, we should know that no one can dispute that the Majlis Raja Raja Melayu is actually the one that uh, safeguarding and retaining the position of the Malay rulers in the federal constitution. This is because before the Malay rulers were called as the conference of rulers, they were called as the uh, Durbar. Uh, this club uh, were, uh, was uh, from uh, the Malay rulers, the nine of the Malay rulers, as well as the British. So the club uh, discussed the matter of uh, constitution and national language and, of, uh, and the position of Islam in the federation with the British. So as a Malay, they were known that as the people uh, that obey and love their sultan that much. And in the process of the form, we know that in the process of the formation of Malayan Union, the British uh, gave the Malay rulers no power in the federal constitu constitution that uh, made the Malay, the Malay people do not agree with the formation. So, uh, with the existence of the Majlis Raja Raja Melayu, which is called as the Conference of the Malay Rulers, uh, the rulers have the right to defend their right and they have a power as a kings in the constitution. So, uh, we can say that the Conference of Rulers are still uh, significant to the federal constitution because they have a great power to elect and to dismiss the young Dipatuan Agum. So, uh, we should know that, it should be noted that if there was no Majlis Raja Raja Melayu, how do the young Dipatuan Agum should, uh, may be elected for every five years? Then who will be the young Dipatuan Agum for Malaysia and who will be the deputy of young Dipatuan Agum? The maybe you can say that the prime minister and maybe the jemaah menteri would help the prime minister to choose to elect the young dipertuan agung, but actually they cannot interfere with the election of the young dipertuan agung because uh, in the article of uh, federal constitution, article thirty eight subsection two, it stated that the member of the conference of rulers may act in their discretion in any proceeding relating to the following functions that is to say uh, the election or removal of, from office of the Yang Dipertuan Agong or the election of the Timbalan Yang Dipertuan Agong so to appoint a uh, Yang Dipertuan Agong there must be the consent there must be a uh, consent from the majority of the Malay rulers in the conference of um, rules in every five years the next reason why the conference of rulers are significant in order to protect the religion of islam 
uh, the privilege of Malay people and Bahasa Melayu as the national language in the federal constitution. Um, we can deny that uh, the conference of rulers uh, was function to give a consent to certain law on a certain matters in the constitution, uh, including uh, relating to Article 153 that deals with the special position of a Malays and the native of Sabah and Sarawak. Meanwhile, um, Article 152 that stated that the Malay language should be the national language. So with this article, the Majlis Raja Raja Melayu can be seen as the one that represents the Malay people in the Federation to protect the rights of Malays and, and who uh, originate from the uh, from Mal Malay land and Sabah Sarawak land. So, uh, other than that, the power of the Conference of Rulers in the protection of the religion uh, of Islam is important as the religion and the federation should not be separated. Also, uh, we should know that Islamic affairs should be managed by the Conference of Rulers. Uh, to reinstate the dignity of the royal institution apart from empowering it. So, uh, with the power of the Conference of Rulers and the protection under the federal constitution, no one, no one can argue neither disturb the strings of Islamic affairs. The last of the part of analysis, uh, we can see that the comfort by giving the power the conference of rulers can make the federation uphold the value of check and balance. This is because uh, the conference of rulers may change the decision um, either in the parliament or in the court if the decision are not aligned with the federal constitution nor any challenge to the right of Malays and the protection of national language as well as the originality of Tanah Melayu. A ruler, uh, they have a responsibility to ensure that the constitution and the philosophy enacted behind it is understood and protected and a king rules and does not govern but is responsible to monitor and ensure that there is fairness and justice in the administration where it is uh, organized and transparent and must play the role of a wise arbitrator towards the legislation executive neither uh, judiciary to ensure that there is a check and balance while strengthening it public confidence on democratic practice. So with that, the Magistra Georgia Melayu or the Conference of rulers are important moreover in this era to in order to protect the right and the privilege from any uh, disturbance injustice and any threat from others to conclude and summarize the video we can see that article 38 clause 2 has notably specified the list of rules and powers to the countries of rulers and to simply put, the powers of the Conference of Rulers includes on electing, removing, appointing, consenting, and granting pardon. And we can see that the Conference of Rulers continues to be significant and important in preserving Malaysian rights, particularly those who are Malays and Muslims. And the religion of Islam and the Malay privilege will be both significantly impacted and affected by any challenge to the conference of rulers. With that, the entire commission will end the discussion with Assalamualaikum and thank you for listening.